Heart failure is a serious problem that affects over 7 million people. 500,000 new cases are diagnosed each year. Heart failure is a morbid condition, and even with the best medical therapy, one-year mortality following a heart failure admission approaches 33%. New data from the CDC suggests that heart failure is affecting younger populations. In 2010, 29% of patients hospitalized for congestive heart failure were under the age of 65, which is up from 23% in 2000. For patients with medically refractory heart failure, transplantation offers the best survival. However, not everyone is a candidate, and transplantation is limited by the availability of donors. Mechanical circulatory support in the form of the left ventricular assist device, or LVAD, has emerged as a viable option for patients with advanced heart failure. Early data from 2001 demonstrates superiority of the LVAD therapy compared with medical therapy alone in patients with advanced heart failure. Device technology has improved substantially over the past 10 years. Continuous flow pumps are significantly smaller and more durable when compared to the early pulsatile pumps. Even with the improved technology, however, mechanical circulatory support still depends on an external power source, which is connected to the pump via transcutaneous driveline. The drivelines can be cumbersome and are prone to trauma and infection. Driveline infections occur in up to a quarter of all LVADs implanted at one year. Patients who have had some form of trauma to the driveline are more at risk for development of a driveline infection. Patients who have had an LVAD place for destination therapy are also more at risk for developing a driveline infection. This is likely related to the increased duration of LVAD therapy, as well as the increased age and fragility of this population when compared to the bridge tr transplantation group. Driveline infections carry a significant morbidity and mortality. Studies have shown that the majority of patients will require some form of operative intervention to clear the infection. Furthermore, there is evidence of decreased survival in patients who have had a documented driveline infection. Patients who have had an LVAD as a bridge to transplantation are less likely to get a heart transplant if they have had a driveline infection. Minimizing driveline infections benefits from a systematic, multidisciplinary approach that spans the operative technique, postoperative management, patient education, and long-term follow-up. In these next slides, we describe our operative technique as it has developed over the years. After the pump is implanted, the driveline is tunneled to the right upper quadrant using a single puncture technique. The exit site is positioned 3 centimeters from the costal margin in the mid-axillary line. The exit site is closed using a monofilament suture and sealed with dermabond. Early immobilization is important to prevent driveline trauma. In the early implants, we used a heavy proline suture to anchor the driveline. This left an undesirable imprint on the protective coating and concern for compromise of the integrity of the driveline. We have since modified our technique to include a red rubber catheter bumper around the proximal driveline. The slit in the bumper allows for easy removal of the sutures when the patient returns to clinic. The driveline is sterilely dressed by experienced nurses wearing masks and gloves. A prepackaged driveline exit management system is used along with a specifically derived protocol for driveline care. This is an example of what is included in the driveline management kit. All gloves, drapes, and sponges necessary for the change are included in the sterile packaging. Easy to follow written instructions are provided to the patient and caregivers as they begin to learn the techniques of driveline care. The patient and family members spend several weeks in the hospital learning about the LVAD, including driveline care. Showering and other activities of daily living are closely supervised by the occupational therapist before the patient transitions home. At one month postoperatively, the red rubber anchor is removed and replaced with a soft silicone anchor. Patients are followed at regular intervals with photo documentation of the driveline exit site, as seen here. Driveline infections often present months after the time of surgery. Any concern for redness or increased drainage warrants immediate clinic visit. Often, the infection is localized to the distal driveline. However, the pump pocket can also harbor an abscess. CT scan, blood, and surface cultures are obtained for diagnosis. Patients are placed on culture-directed antibiotics 
and surgical intervention is considered for deep or refractory infections. These next slide demonstrates driveline repositioning in a patient with a localized distal driveline infection. A circumferential excision of the tissue around the exit site is performed. The driveline is then mobilized such that it is away from any area of previous infection. Deep tissue layers are closed, followed by the skin. Negative pressure therapy is used for the previous exit site. This shows the driveline in its new location several weeks later. Deeper pocket infections must be surgically addressed. This patient was unable to undergo an LVAD exchange. Therefore, the pump pocket was opened and fully irrigated. Antibiotic beads were placed in the wound and a negative pressure dressing was applied. The picture on the right shows the wound one month later. Skilled wound nurses are an integral part of the team, particularly for complex cases such as this. At our institution, 157 continuous flow LVADs were planted in 136 patients since 2009. 119 were discharged and followed as an outpatient. 15% had a documented driveline infection. As part of a continuous review process, several measures were implemented to minimize the number of driveline infections. This included burying the velour on the driveline, providing patients with a written protocol on driveline management, providing patients all the sterile supplies necessary for dressing changes in a prepackaged kit, and finally, the interoperative modification of the red rubber driveline protector. Through these efforts, we have had no driveline infections between January of 2012 and March of 2014. LVAD therapy extends survival in patients with advanced heart failure. However, there remains a significant risk of developing a driveline infection. This risk is associated with longer durations of therapy. A multidisciplinary approach to driveline management can help to minimize driveline infections. Prompt recognition and treatment of driveline infections is key as there is substantial morbidity and mortality associated with these conditions.